Hey there, team chemistry coach coming at ya. We are in our journey on chemical mathematics or how do we do math in chemistry when we have all these units and all this uncertainty we got to track and all this garbage. It's not just writing numbers down and popping them in your calculator. We got to do that too, right? But remember, every answer in chemistry is about the numerical value, tracking the, the uncertainty, you know, looking at your significant figure rules. Are you subtracting or adding? You know, dividing, multiplying, taking averages, logarithms, all that fun stuff. And then uh, tracking units. So the units have to work out. Woo! Well, commonly, you're going to be running into percents. That's uh, especially percent by mass. We're going to be talking about that. I'll do a whole video on that later on down the road in another journey. But when you run into percentages, usually in K-12 K education, um, you're taught to think of as percent as taking you know, like a ratio to a percent and, you know, multiplying, you know, if you got a fraction or whatever, multiply by 100. If you got a percent, divide by 100. So if I said 79%, you'd think 0.79, right? You just inst instinctively do that. But notice that 0.79 doesn't have units on it. So you don't, it doesn't clarify what are you talking about. A chemist needs to clarify what they're talking about. Otherwise, sometimes you get it upside down. If we're doing a, an equation, you're like, do I divide by that percent or multiply by the percent? That's the wrong way of thinking as a chemist. A chemist doesn't need to think about, do I divide or multiply by that number? You go, okay, well, what are the units? What is the species in the numerator and what's its units? What's the species in the denominator? What's its units? And then you can see, does that need to go in the numerator, denominator to cancel out? So you never need to worry about multiplying or dividing. It just happens. So two ways I want you to think about percents in my class. As a part over whole, right? It's a ratio. There's a whole part, you know, a whole of something, and we're looking at what portion of that whole, like, a, you know, say we've got an ore or whatever. What portion of that ore is that particular compound? Or what portion of that compound is that particular element? Or what portion of that solution is the solute? Or, or what portion of that alloy is that particular metal? Same as what portion of air is just nitrogen? So we're looking at, um, and you're probably familiar with that percentage unit there. You're like, well, air is about 78% nitrogen. It's a fraction part over whole. But you can also think of it in terms of parts per hundred. We're going to use both of these ways of thinking. So if I had a hundred marbles and eight of them were green, well, that's eight out of a hundred. Eight parts, the whole is a hundred, the part is eight. So it's eight over 100. Do you see the thinking process? Which happens to be eight percent. So when we do it as a chemist, we're going to think of what is the part, what species is the part we're interested in, what is the whole, identify what those substances are, and then think of it as parts per hundred. So we're going to assume 100 parts of the whole. So if it's a percent by mass, we'll do grams. If it's a percent by volume, we'll do milliliters or whatever units are given to you. So assume 100 parts of the whole thing, and then the number provided in the percent is the part of the whole. Um, so let's just look at it. It's easier to do it than to say it. So for example, if you're into, you know, bullion investing or whatever, you'll hear this term called junk silver. Um, and junk silver are kind of crappy coins prior to 1965. Because remember, I showed you some of those. Remember that mercury dime I showed you? If you haven't seen it, it's in a later video. Uh, so a lot of the dimes, quarters, half dollars, and dollars prior to 1965 were made up of silver. And they're 90% silver. Now, sig fig wise, I didn't look it up. So let's just say two significant digits. I'm sure it's not 90 plus or minus 10. Anywhere from 80 to 100. Now, I'm sure it's pretty close to 90. And, you know, they used to clip things in the old days. But, you know, with reeded edges, they can't do that anymore. So let's say 90 to two significant figures. We'll put that naked decimal on, on there to make that zero significant. I don't know if it's 90.0 off the top of my head. But these are old coins that have been rubbed down. Now, if it's a pristine coin, right, maybe it hasn't been circulated, and there's no scratches or, or rub marks on it, that's going to be worth a lot more than face value, right? Um, but the, the junk ones uh, that, that don't have any numismatic coin value, we just you, just, you can buy them in bags of junk silver, and they just say junk 90% silver, off you go. Right? Um, so any of those coins. Depending, you know, bar, could be Barber Dimes, Mercury Dimes, uh, Standing Liberty uh, coins, uh, Seated Liberty coins. There's all these cool different old coins if you haven't looked at them. But you'll buy bags of them. How are we going to set that up? So here's the setup for this. If I was using this 90% as a conversion factor, well, what's the part we're interested in? Well, that's the part. 
right? The coins or the junk is the hole, right? Those coins. So if I set that up, we'd say, well, if I had one by mass, see the by mass? So if I had 100 grams of those coins, we'll call it junk coins, So pre-1965, 90% uh, uh, silver coins that are not good. Uh, they're all worn down and probably can't read dates real well and stuff or see details. Well, if I had 100 grams total and these and a percent parts per 100, then 90% of it would mean I have 90 grams of silver. Do you see the setup? So now I've got a substance, right? I got junk coins, that's my hole. I've got silver, which is a part of that hole, so that's my part of a hole. I assume 100 grams exactly of the hole, which means whatever number is given to you will be the number on top. Ah, you know, some people say, well, I can just put one here and then put the point nine. Yeah, but then you gotta move decimal places around. It's not wrong mathematically, perfectly fine. But I like it this way because we think of it as parts per 100 and you don't change the number. Now we can use this as a conversion factor. Remember conversion factors. Everything I introduced to you, we're going to think about as a conversion factor. So percents are conversion factors. I can go from junk coins to silver, or I can say, hey, if I wanted uh, 5.2 pounds of silver, how many pounds of junk coins would I need to purchase in order to do that, you can work it backwards. And in one way, it would be this way. The other way, it would be flipped upside down. Boom! So you're going to see this when we do take compounds and we look at, well, what percent of that compound is that specific element? Or we can look at solutions, which is a solute dissolved in a particular solvent to make a solution. The solution's the whole. The solute is the part. And, and if we, if we look at the percent by mass of that, then we know, hey, if we have 100 grams of solution, it'd be this many grams of that particular solute that's dissolved in it. Very, very useful. We're going we're gonna to be haunted by this all the way through. And you'll see some interesting homework problems that use this. So let's do an example problem just to show you what it's like. Remember how to do this, gang. It's important to think of it this way. As a chemist, as a mathematician, you don't have to. But as a chemist, we're tracking uncertainty and units and substances and the numbers. Oh! Get your calculators out, team. Let's see if we can attack this kind of problem. So I'm not. I'm going to do a double percent on you. Oh, see if you. So so think about it, right? If you need to think about something pictorially, you could do that as well. So we got a 150 pound mixture. The, the math, the number is irrelevant to a chemist at this point. It's like, well, I got pounds. Oh, and the mixture. Well, I know a mixture. I could have said an or 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 something like that up there. But let's say we got a mixture. We know it's two or more components. It's 42.8% by mass lead to sulfide, PBS. Wasn't that a TV station? I remember when I grew up, Channel 9, Channel 4, Channel 5. There weren't too many. Oh, we didn't have remotes back then. I was the remote. I would have to get up and change the channel. My dad's like, hey, turn it to Channel 2. <sighs> turn it to Channel 11. That's how I learned my easy math. Okay, well, I'll show you how. To, there's going to be a whole video on how to do this. If that compound is 86.60% lead by mass, how many grams of lead are in the original mixture? So think about it this way, all right? So we've got a mixture here, which contains some lead to sulfide. And it's about four, so about half of it, right? So out of that, is the PBS, right? And then the rest is other stuff. I don't know what that stuff is. Probably not a good term to use in chemistry, stuff. <laughs> it's not really explicit. But I know that mixture contains a lot of, a lot of species, pure substances. Um, so, but 42.8% of it, you know, a little bit less than half, would be the PBS. See that? And then out of that PBS, looks like 86.60% of it, which is about here, right? Would be just the lead. You see that? And then the rest of it would be the sulfur. 
So I'm taking the mixture using the percent to get the amount of the PBS and then use the percent to get it the amount of just the lead. So this is going to be a multi-step calculation. So we're going to go from pounds of mixture and we want grams, right? So we can we can do the percentages in pounds or we can do them in grams, doesn't matter. So you can convert to grams here and then do the percentages as grams, or you can do them as pounds and then convert pounds to grams later. So let's go ahead and convert that to grams mixture. And then we can go to grams of the uh, compound and then to grams of the lead. So first step, let's convert to grams. Second step, let's convert to gra from grams of mixture to grams of the compound. And then step three, I ran out of room. <laughs> go to grams of lead. Should be pretty straightforward, right? Let's do that in purple, yeah. So what's our number? 150 pounds. So we got 150 pounds of the mixture, okay? I haven't calculated this ahead of time, so I have no idea what the answer is going to be. Probably should do these before I put them on video, right? So if I have an, if I make an error, you guys got to raise your hand and let me know. Let's convert that to grams. So for every pound of that mixture, now remember, grams to pounds, if you look at the exact conversion factors, oh, oh, I can't get it, Captain. All right, where are we at? So 453.59237 grams per pound. That's an exact conversion factor. So 453.59237 grams of mixture. Now, that's only two. See that zero doesn't have a trailing uh, decimal point there? No, it's a trailing zero without a decimal point, so it's only two safety. You really don't need all of those, right? But, oh my God, it took me like a part of a second to write it down. Oh no, Professor, do I have to write the 237? Oh, it might kill me. Oh my God, just write the whole stupid thing down. All right, you, the whining, you know, call the ambulance, man. Dial 1 800 Whammy, W A H M O M Y. It's not that bad. <laughs> okay, just get used to it. When you do it enough, you'll have it memorized. It gets stuck in your brain. But I will always provide you English to metric conversions. All right, so pound of mixture goes bye bye. Boop. So I'm in grams of mixture. Now I can use the percents, right? So I'm going to erase this. Now I'll just show you. We looked at it before. We're taking that 42.8% um, of that mixture is the lead 2 sulfide. So here's how we're going to set this up. We want grams of the mixture on the bottom and grams of the portion, which happens to be the, the compound on the top. See that? So assume, it's a percent, so assume 100 grams, or whatever unit you're in, that could be tons over tons, of the whole. So we're going to assume 100 grams of the whole mixture. If there's 100 grams of that mixture, there's 42.8 grams of the lead to sulfide. Do you see that? So that 42.8% is written that way. And now we can see how the grams of mixture is now converted to grams of the compound. That's what percents are for. It's a conversion factor between a part of a whole or a whole to a part. Now I, I want to go, I've gone from pounds of mixture to grams of mixture, grams of mixture to pounds of the, of the compound. Now I want to go to grams. That, that says grams, not pounds. Now I want to go from grams of PBS to grams of PB. So let's do another conversion factor. I want grams of the compound or the hole on the bottom, right? We're going went from here to here. Now we're going from here to here. I want grams of just the lead on top. And I'm going to use that percentage value, the 86.60. So that says if we assume there's 100 grams of the hole, so let's assume there's 100 grams of um, lead to sulfide, there would be 86.60 grams of lead in that. And that allows us to cancel grams of PBS. And the only unit I have that is grams of lead. Check, check off, done. So I've got two significant digits here. That's exact. Three significant digits there. The hundreds assumed. It's a it's a defined value, so that's not assumed. It's a defined value. So these hundreds are exact. They're not one sig fig. 
but the percentage is not exact. So there's four significant digits there, trailing zero with a decimal counts, three significant digits there, exact two. So I am limited to the two sig figs, right? That zero is not significant. So where's my trusty calculator? I should have done this ahead of time. So let's double check me, take 150 times 453, 0.59237, that's always where I screw it up, right? I like the four doesn't hit, I don't hit it hard enough or something. Divided by one times 42.8 equals, divided by 100 equals, times 86.60 equals, divided by 100 equals. I should probably double check that. That's a pretty big number, right? Although grams are a lot, 150 pounds, and we're going to grams. Grams is a much smaller unit, so it's probably gonna be a pretty big number. I get 2.5. I'm gonna put this in scientific notation. It's like 25,218, so we'll put that in scientific notation. So 2.521, right? I got a whole bunch of digits there, so I'm gonna go 2.5. 2, 1, I've run out of room, times 10 to the 4th, grams of lead. Ideally, that would all be in one line, right? Let me double check that. 150 times 450. I always recommend you do it twice. 237 equals times 42.8 equals divided by 100 equals times 86.60 equals divided by 100. I do this on exams. If I get different answers, I'm like, whoa, whoops. All right, so if I do it three times, if two out of three are the same, I feel pretty good. If I do it three times and get three different answers, I just cry a little bit going on the next problem. I'll say I got the same thing twice. Make sure I move my decimal points over. So that's not going to round up. So that stays as 2.5 times 10 to the fourth grams of lead. Got the squish factor going on down there. But the point is, how do you set up percentages as a conversion factor? You are good to go. And this will pop up in many, many different videos along this journey. You guys are awesome.